Hello and welcome to another video on the desktop tips series on aggregations. Today's video is going to show you how you can add multiple aggregation tables to a Power BI desktop model. So not just one, not just two, but this video is going to show you how you can add three aggregation tables, configure them and importantly test to make sure that they're working. So what you should hopefully be able to see is a very simple AdventureWorks model. We have a fact table in the center. Now this fact table is in direct query mode. And we have two simple dimension tables, dim date and dim product. And naturally they are in dual storage mode. So the first thing we want to do is add some aggregation tables. So the fact internet sales table is raw. Um, and if we jump over to a query tool like SQL Server Management Studio, um, here is the T-SQL going to be used as the foundation for the three aggregation tables. So the first one I want to show you is going to be aggregated by uh, a value from the, 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 the date key column from the date table as well as the key column from the product table. So this is going to be our largest aggregation table. And if we have a look to see the size of this, um, we can run this query locally and we can see down in the bottom corner once it completes, it should be 68,000 rows. The next aggregation table we're going to uh, add to the model is only based on uh, day. So we're, we're not introducing the product key to this. It's just, just going to be aggregated by day. And if we run this query here uh, to get a sense of the number of rows we're going to get in the aggregation table, it's only 3,000, so quite a lot smaller. And then finally, we're going to have an aggregation table only on product key. And this should only be about 130 rows. Fantastic. So let's add the first aggregation table to our model. Jumping back to Power BI, what we need to do is go into the trend, uh, Power Query editor, where we can see our existing uh, three tables in the uh, model view. So we're going to say, I want to use uh, a new source. Now, in my case, I'm using a SQL Server database. So I'm going to paste in my query. I want my aggregation table to be an import table. And once I put in the details for the server and database, hopefully I don't have a space here. No, that looks good. That should be all we need to do. And we'll see a fourth table appear. And here's a sample of um, how many rows. Remember this first one we're adding has 68,000 rows. We can see we're grouping by uh, the date key and the product key, and there are three numeric columns. The three numeric columns will be what we um, map as alternatives to the underlying fact sales table. Uh, I like to give my aggregation tables meaningful names. Once we have the first one in place, we can just duplicate that table. Click on the icon here for the source, jump back to SQL Server Management Studio, grab the T-SQL for the next query, Control all and control paste that in, click OK. And then all we need to do is rename the aggregation table. This will automatically be in direct query mode. And then finally we can duplicate either one of the existing two aggregation tables. Click on the source icon, which allows us to jump back to here, grab the final T-SQL query, come back to Power Query, Control All, and paste that in. Okay. And I will rename my aggregation table. This should only have 131 rows, which is great. And we're done with Power Query for now. So what we can do is just drop back to Power BI, and we'll configure the tables. The first thing we'll need to do is configure the relationships because we're using the relationship technique to um, uh, for the ag awareness feature to be able to find these aggregation tables uh, when it makes sense. Uh, we're just loading the tables. These are import modes, so they'll just take a little bit of time to, to bring in the data from my very slow Azure SQL DB. Slow because I'm running it on the uh, cheapest, uh, lowest tier. And we're good now, so we won't need to um, bring those in anymore. So I'll make these a little larger, and we'll have one over here, which is the largest one. This is the largest one, so we'll pop them up the top. The day one in the center, and here is the smallest one, just simply by product. So the product only relates to the product key, so let's um, drag that across. 
and it's going to default think that we're doing a one-to-one -one, um, uh, relationship so it is important to make sure that the aggregation table is set as one uh, sorry many to one to the dim table and that allows us to set the cross filter direction to be single and we're product key to product key that's the relationship for that aggregation table is done so the day table goes off to the other side so we, we're using order date key to date key and we'll have to make the same correction in the uh, relationship relationship dialog so we're going to be aggregation table on the many side dimension table on the one side so many to one set the filter direction to be single we're never ever going to be filtering up the other way and then finally our last one we will have a link to both tables so the product key will come to here we will not need to um, uh, fix the many to one in this case because we will have multiple product keys uh, detected now so it's just a case of okay and uh, we'll drag order date key onto date key and that's the relationships done and apart from rearranging these to uh, align nicely we don't need to do any more to the aggregation tables now we need to set up the actual aggregation mapping <clears throat> so let's click on the ellipsis for the first of these and select manage aggregations count of table rows will be count of table rows over our fact table we don't need to configure anything more there we don't need to put anything in for the um, uh, the key column because that's managed through this relationship the order quantity is going to be a sum of fact internet sales and we, we scroll down order quantity now sales amounts probably not going to work and I'll show you why uh, when we go fact internet sales and come down we'll see that the sales amount column is grayed out now the reason why it's grayed out is because the data type for the underlying fact table needs to match exactly the same data type for the ag table so we'll clear this for now and we'll come back and fix this and I'll show you how to fix it what we need to do is on the fields column find the sales amount column in the raw fact table and, and make a note of what the data type is and uh, is that going to show us up here Oh, properties so the sales amount column is using a currency um, whereas the sales amount column over here are automatically defaulting to decimal so we'll need to fix those on the three uh, three other tables so we'll go to the first aggregation table click on sales amount and we'll see that the data type is decimal number let's change it to fixed decimal number which is another way of saying currency so we'll go okay we'll click on sales amount on the second of the three and we'll change that to be a fixed decimal number that's updating this is, this is if we go back into power query you'll see that it's adding another step to um, uh, do this transformation and then finally the table that we were just looking at changing decimal number to be fixed decimal number and okay you'll notice this table is already hidden because the action of uh, configuring any mapping at all on a table um, uh, will hide the table we don't want end users to be building measures uh, or seeing columns in this table to build measures over them we always want them to be still writing their decks as if it is um, uh, using the the uh, raw detail table uh, so we do this one we'll go back into here manage aggregations we can see that the count of rows and order quantities is still there sum of sales amount will be uh, as, a, as an alternative when you're writing a sum over uh, a column in the fact internet sales and that column is going to be the sales amount which is now visible so that that aggregation table is all done that's normally what we would do if we were adding just a single aggregation table to the model um, but I'm going to jump back in one last time and highlight that the precedence for this table uh, we're not going to change we're going to leave it the default value of zero but the next table which has 3,000 rows as opposed to 68,000 rows we're going to set the value of the precedence so we don't want to ma manage uh, relationships what we want to do is manage aggregations we're going to set the precedence to 10 a higher value in here it needs to be numeric means that when there is a tie and a query can be resolved either from this aggregation table or this aggregation table it'll use the one with the higher precedence um, which should 
typically be this should hopefully be the um the table with the uh, fewest number of rows when you consider the grain so this is going to be a count of table rows of fact internet sales we don't need to set anything on the uh the column that has a relationship to the dimension table um, the order quantity is going to be a sum of fact internet sales order quantity there we go and sales amount this should work first time fact internet sales and when we scroll down we should find sales amount wonderful that's done and that's going to hide the table as part of this exercise of setting up the mapping so the last table that we need to configure of the three aggregation tables is this one here at the bottom this only has 131 rows in it so we'll go to manage aggregations uh, we're going to set this with the highest precedence so if we write a query and our first test query uh, can be validly resolved from any one of our three aggregation tables or the raw detail table um, it'll it'll prefer when it can find a mapping and it will map to all these three um, it'll it'll choose the one with the highest precedence so we'll do the count of table rows for fact internet sales this will only show tables that are in direct query mode so if you're ever wondering if you're setting this up against and your table is not showing here it's probably because it's not in direct query at the moment so order quantity is a sum of fact internet sales order quantity this is exciting stuff i know we don't need to set the key column because the relationship takes care of that in this case the sales amount is a sum of fact internet sales there and that's it that's all done we don't have to configure anything more on the model aggregations for multiple aggregation tables are all set so now let's jump over to dax studio and do some basic testing so i'm firing up my dax studio it's uh, the dialogue is popping up in another window by launching it from the external tools bar uh, dax studio should be automatically connected to this power bi model and we can see there the uh, the three tables that we just had it and it have a slightly grayed out uh, icon there that that suggests that they are hidden um, and then we have our three visible tables so the very first uh, piece of dax that we want to run is just a straight sum of the sales amount column in the fact internet sales now we don't actually want the query to use this table or this column because this could be millions or even billions of rows we want it to use one of these three aggregation tables so how do we know that this is working i'm going to click the server timings button in the ribbon and down here at the bottom we have a server timings tab and it's telling me that the query trace has now started so if i click to server timings which has some other useful information i can uh, launch my query or execute my query it should be very quick it took eight milliseconds in total but the in the information we're specifically interested in here is in the first line we can see that a a rewrite attempt was made but importantly a match was found and when we click on the match found over here on the right hand side this area tells us a little bit more detail about importantly which table it managed to find now this particular aggregation table is my smallest one the table with the precedence of 20 and if we expand the details column there's a little bit of JSON here to tell me uh, uh, more about um, uh, you know how that was able to succeed so that's just a straight sum of internet sales now let's have a look at a DAX query that does a bit more than that uh, this query is going to again run a sum over the same column um, but now it's going to group by a column in the deep in the date table and we can use any column in the date table we're not limited to just only the grain of the column we could use month or fiscal year or any of these and the aggregation table sh should kick in now i'm not expecting it to hit product anymore i'm expecting it to hit one of the other aggregation tables so let's just run this sure enough a match was found we can click on here and we can see that it matched on the ag day table so this is the 3000 row table and it took next to no time at all to um uh, complete that so the the next query we're going to run just extends that a little more by including a grouping on a column from the product table and again because we've used relationships to um, connect these uh, aggregation tables we can use any column in here and it should still still succeed so long as we're performing a sum of sales amount let's run this 
and sure enough we see that the rewrite attempt was uh, well a rewrite was attempted a match was found and it happened to use the 68,000 row uh, product day column so all I'm going to do now is just make a slight tweak to my query and say let's now uh, perform a max of the value in this table now we didn't bring in a max column we didn't configure any max of in our aggregation dialog so we, I'm expecting to miss our aggregation table so we run this and have a look to see what output we get here in Dex Studio. We can see that a rewrite attempt was made, but the attempt was failed. The, the attempt failed, sorry. And the second row is telling us that it dropped out to SQL. So it actually ran this um, uh, SQL statement against the underlying source. So it escaped out to direct query. So we're doing something here that means we're not being covered by um, one of our, our, our tables. So let's try and figure out why did we miss? The attempt was failed, the original table we were trying to hit was fact internet sales, and it's telling us um, a bit more detail in the JSON that um, the failure reasons were there is no column mapping available for calendar year, colour, and um, on, on the particular aggregation of, of Mac. So you know, hopefully there's enough information when you do have an attempt fail to help go back and figure out maybe a, a step that you might have missed. So hopefully that helps you understand um, how you can add um, aggregation tables. So now your end users and your report authors can simply do things like take some of um, a sales amount, drag that to the canvas, and by default this will be doing a sum of. So you can be assured that this particular query will be hitting that uh, very small 131 row table. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are going to be a lot more videos coming in this series uh, as we slowly unpeel and dive into uh, more complex um, scenarios. Let me know if you have any feedback or anything in particular that you want to uh, have a video covering on. Otherwise thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next video.